Welcome to All Girl Relationships, where we talk about everyday problems people face in their lives. Let's start the video. My fiance, Liam, was my first and only relationship. We were high school sweethearts, dated all through college, got engaged at 22, and were supposed to get married at 24. Liam always had a close relationship with my sister, Mary, and I never had an issue with it. I thought their closeness was normal, something I should be happy about, especially after reading stories online about in-laws who don't get along with their daughter's partners. Even when some things seem strange to me, like Mary's boyfriends always being overly jealous and protective of her, I chose to ignore it. I didn't want to connect the dots, even though the truth was always right in front of me. I brushed off my concerns as insecurity, but deep down, I knew my instincts were right all along. In the end, I felt foolish for closing my eyes to the truth when I should have been paying attention. I gave Liam and my sister the space to betray me behind my back, and they did it so cleverly on my wedding day of all days. Everything fell apart for me on what was supposed to be one of the happiest days of my life. If someone had asked me beforehand, I wouldn't have imagined that the people I trusted most would hurt me so deeply and in such a public way, with hundreds of people there. I still remember the moment I realized Liam wasn't going to show up for the wedding. It hit me when I found out he had blocked my number and all my social media accounts. I was in so much pain, and the tears just wouldn't stop. No amount of comfort or apologies from others could make me feel better. I couldn't believe that Liam and my sister had vanished without a trace, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find them. I left Liam message after message in a daze, telling him everything Mary's boyfriend had told me that Mary was pregnant with his child, but she had tried to make it seem like it was Liam's. I knew if Liam didn't read those messages now, he'd be stuck with Mary for a long time, and that's exactly what happened. He never saw my messages, and I figured they stayed together. I was heartbroken for a year, but one day I realized I needed to move on. I started going to therapy, joined some local clubs, made new friends, got my own apartment, and started living a decent life again. Years have passed since everything happened, and now it just feels like a bad dream. In a strange way, I sometimes feel grateful for what happened. Even though I was 27 when we were about to get married, I see now that I wasn't truly ready. Now, I know what I want, and I've found someone who makes me happy. I started dating Adam, who treats me much better than Liam ever did. Things with Adam are going great, and we're planning to move in together and take the next step in our relationship. My life feels normal now, and I realize it's because Liam isn't around to cause chaos. But of course, this story wouldn't exist if everything had just stayed calm. It all started when I got a call from Liam. The number was unfamiliar, so I answered without knowing who it was. I was shocked to hear Liam's voice on the other end. He sounded like he'd been crying, and his voice was shaky. He began the conversation by apologizing for everything. Feeling awkward, I just replied with a quiet, hmm, while he kept talking. He said he had finally read the messages I sent him years ago and that everything made sense now. He regretted everything and asked if we could meet just once to talk. I told him no, that after everything he did, I couldn't trust him anymore. Surprisingly, he didn't argue. He just hung up. I thought that was the end of it, and I felt relieved. I finally got some closure, and it seemed like Liam had gotten the karma he deserved. But unfortunately, that phone call was just the start. The next day, I started getting flooded with calls and texts from my parents, relatives, and even Mary. They all blamed me for ruining a happy marriage. My mom was especially upset, saying it was petty of me to tell Liam everything Mary's ex-boyfriend had told me, because apparently, she and Liam were already building their own relationship. I shouldn't have tried to ruin things, but this made me sure that Liam must have confronted Mary, and something went wrong between them. Honestly, I don't feel a bit of sympathy for someone like Mary, who wrecked my home. Everything that's happening to her is because she couldn't be honest or loyal. Still, I can't help but have a little bit of doubt, even though Liam's family and even Adam are on my side. I really need some advice here. Am I wrong? I talked to Adam more about this because I felt it was time to tell him the whole story. Before, he only knew a few details. I told him about my wedding day, Mary's ex-boyfriend, Liam, and everything that's happened since. Adam was really understanding and supportive. 
He knew why I was so hurt by how my family was acting in this situation. He even suggested that I should meet Liam and hear what he had to say. I was surprised, but I agreed. I messaged Liam on the same number he used to call me. We talked a little and made plans to meet in a couple of days as he would be flying to my city. I'll keep you all updated. Well, I met Liam today, and everything you guys predicted was right. Mary had lied to Liam because, of course, Liam had more money than her ex-boyfriend, who was still in college when they were dating. Their relationship turned toxic right after Liam proposed because Mary had gotten what she wanted a bank account. She stopped doing the things she used to with him and just started using him for his money. Liam was crushed. Since they were married, divorcing her would mean losing a lot of his assets. Eventually, though, he found one of the messages I had sent him while going through his old phone, and that confirmed his suspicions. He decided to get their son's DNA tested, just in case, and it turned out the ex-boyfriend was right. Liam kicked Mary out and filed for divorce. Mary is furious now because she had to move back in with my parents and can no longer afford her expensive lifestyle. Liam told me he wanted to meet me to thank me for helping him. He also tried to talk about how he wished things had worked out between us. I told him straight that the only reason we didn't work out was because of him and his lack of loyalty. I guess he finally realized how badly he messed up because he listened to everything I said with his head down in shame. I didn't say much. I just got up and left. Right now, what I'm really thinking about is my relationship with my family. It's heartbreaking how they side with Mary when she's clearly the one in the wrong. It makes me wonder if my relationship with them was ever real. I know they've always favored Mary because she's the youngest, but this is too much. I'm honestly speechless. I think I need some time to figure out what I really want. Adam and I decided to go on a road trip, which lasted about two weeks. Luckily, our jobs are flexible. That trip opened my eyes. It made me see my parents for who they really are and how they truly view me. I realized that, to them, I was always just a replacement for Mary. As soon as they got her back, they'd forget about me. This time wasn't any different from the others, except now I saw it clearly and could connect the dots. Their favoritism toward her is so extreme that I wouldn't be surprised if they even encouraged her to have an affair with Liam. As expected, Mary threw a tantrum when she came back and my parents got mad at me again. I'm sure they also gave her a lot of money, especially since she gave birth to their first grandchild. But as usual, Mary ran off again, this time with another rich guy, and cut all contact with my parents, leaving them to take care of my nephew. I didn't find out from my parents, though. They started acting sweet and talked about wanting to see me again, which made me suspicious. So I called my cousin, who told me everything. That's when I realized they wanted me to take care of Mary's son until she came back, and then they'd push me aside again. I wasn't going to let that happen. That's when it all clicked for me, and I knew I had to cut them off. So I blocked their numbers. I got back to the city yesterday and also found out that Liam tried to move back in with his parents after losing so much money on divorce lawyers and alimony, but they said no. Like I said before, he deserves it. I don't feel any sympathy for Mary, my parents, or Liam. Mary's going to face her consequences, my parents are now raising my nephew, and Liam's life has fallen apart because he couldn't stay loyal. I have Adam, and my biggest concern now is just our relationship. Thank you. You're definitely for cutting ties with your family. It sounds like a mess, and the sooner you cut them off, the happier you'll be. You also need to trust your gut more, because it can really save you from a lot of heartache. I love how you ended up cutting your family out. I could tell throughout the story that they played a big role in all the problems. I'm glad you realized it and dealt with it at the root. Now, on to my situation. I'm 28, female, and live with my husband, who is 30. My mom, who's 61, was diagnosed with early-onset dementia about a year ago. She's been living with us because none of my other family members are willing to take her in. Since I'm a nurse, there's been pressure on me to take care of her, but it's very different when it's your own mom. I know she's going to get worse over time. Right now, she's still enjoying life, watching her favorite movies and playing card games. But she can't be left alone because she's vulnerable and might accidentally start a fire or forget where she is. I have one sibling, an older brother named Larry, who's 37. Until recently, he hasn't helped at all with caring for our mom. Larry lives with his wife, 
who's 35, and they have two kids, ages 12 and 9. I've asked Larry for help a few times, but he always says he's too busy with the kids and their activities. Over the past month, I've been more firm with Larry and told him that she's his mom too, and the least he could do is help out once a week. Now, every Friday, he takes our mom out for the day, usually to get coffee and go for a walk. She loves it and it gives me and my husband a break. But Larry's wife is upset with me. She says I'm taking Larry away from their family and when he comes home, he doesn't want to help with housework or play with the kids. I told her that's not my fault and that our mom's care isn't optional. It's not fair for me and my husband to do everything when Larry is fully capable of helping. She suggested we put our mom in a nursing home. I told her we can't afford a nursing home unless she and Larry are willing to split the cost. She said they have better things to spend their money on. I told her, well, tough luck, and that Larry will have to keep helping. She called me a jerk for making Larry help. You're definitely. Taking care of your mom is a huge responsibility for you and your husband. Your brother helping out once a week for a few hours is the least he can do. If he's too tired afterward to help his wife or take care of their kids, that's their issue to figure out. They chose to have kids, so that's not your problem. I'm sure you also have other things you'd like to spend your money on, but here you are providing full-time care for your mom and covering all the costs from what it sounds like. Your brother's wife is being selfish for not trying to understand. But this can't continue like this. It's only going to get harder. Don't let yourself be the only one handling the finances and care for your mom. You and your brother need to work together to find a solution. Of course, you should consider your husband and he should consider his wife, but they don't get the final say. If your sister-in-law doesn't like it, go on vacation and drop your mom off at their house as long as it's safe. Let her see what it's really like to care for someone with dementia. Now, onto my story. My boyfriend, who's 32 and I, 34, are celebrating our four-year anniversary this month. Since the actual day is on a weekday, we decided to celebrate on the weekend. We both work from home, and we don't live together, so I wanted to surprise him on the actual day with breakfast, a plant he loves plants, and a box of chocolates. I arrived at his place around 7 a.m., knocked on the door, and waited a while for him to answer. I figured he was still asleep. When he finally opened the door, he looked upset. I quickly apologized for waking him up and told him I just brought a few gifts for our anniversary. He just said, okay, still looking annoyed and walked back to his bedroom, leaving me standing there with the gifts. I was shocked by his reaction. I put the things I brought on the kitchen table and was about to leave, but then I heard some noise from his bedroom and he came back with his pants on. I thought he was going to hug me or something, but instead he fed his cat and went to the bathroom while I stood by the door. I felt sad about how he reacted and started crying because all I wanted was a little happiness from him. He sighed and asked me what was wrong. I told him I was sad because he seemed annoyed that I was there and I had hoped he would be a little happy that I brought something for our anniversary. He responded sarcastically, saying he was sorry for not meeting my expectations and that I couldn't expect him to be happy because I woke him up and he hadn't slept well. Honestly, I wasn't expecting a big celebration or even a gift from him. All I wanted was a hug, a kiss, and a simple thank you, which didn't happen. We didn't even get to enjoy breakfast together because I was in such a bad mood after that, so I left his place. So, am I the jerk for waking him up to surprise him? Thank you all for your thoughts. It gave me a lot to consider. I'll try to answer your questions. His sleep schedule. He wakes up when he wants since he's a freelancer. He does struggle with insomnia, which he's working on. Before my visit, he told me he was getting back to a regular sleep schedule and would wake up around 8 or 9, so I didn't think 7 a.m. was too early. Initially, I planned to leave the gifts in his mailbox and text him, but I got excited to see his reaction in person. I admit I should have thought that through more carefully. I don't usually show up like that, but I thought it would be a sweet gesture. Does he usually like surprises? Yes, he does keys to his place. I used to have them, but he asked for them back after getting his cat, which he adopted when his grandmother moved to a retirement home. His mom takes care of the cat when he's away, which is why I don't have keys anymore. Some people think it's weird he didn't make another copy, but I don't see it as a red flag. We just didn't think about it. Is he cheating? No, he's not cheating. I didn't give any hints that I didn't trust him. 
The noise I heard was just him drinking water, making his bed, and putting his pants on. I trust him. For the update, we talked about everything and we both agreed that we were a little in the wrong. I apologized for waking him up after a bad night and getting upset at how he reacted. He apologized for making me feel rejected and said it would have been different if he had slept well. He also mentioned he was touched by the gesture, not the jerk. Look, I'm not a morning person either, so I can be like a zombie when I wake up. But even if I were barely functioning, I'd still give you a hug, say thank you, and let you know I needed a quick shower to fully wake up. After five years, you probably know his sleep schedule. A lot of comments are focused on the fact that it was 7 a.m., which is when most people are awake, but since he works from home, his schedule is different. If my partner woke me up at 4 a.m. with a surprise, especially on a day we had already agreed not to celebrate, I'd probably feel the same way.